think, again, I think one of the things that we, we kind of saw, and that was one of the, the first big eye-openers from the research that we did with John Stoner uh, from Chester University, was that quite often it's not the actual group that you're doing that, that makes the difference. It's just the fact that you're doing it with other people that are clean and sober and, and your, your base. And we kind of found that, that within that research group, that it was... These same group of guys were going from AA, were going to smart recovery together. So, uh, you know, so a complete opposite sort of end of the spectrum. This one saying that this is a disease and we're born and we can track this at some point in our life. And this other one saying, well, no, it's not really. It's just we just drink all you because our, our thinking's got a bit warped and a bit twisted. So if we can work that out, we're not going to use. But there was no contradiction or no, they didn't walk out of one group and say, well, this, this completely flies in the face of what we've seen before. They just got the value from being around other people who were clean mm -hmm. and sober because it just normalises that sort of type of behaviour. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's the big thing for us is that, that it's multidisciplinary pathway sort of thing, but that these you've got to do everything for this. mandated for the first 12 weeks, but that also that we ask for a minimum, especially from a residential point of view, a minimum of 20 to 30 hours pro social activity a week. Uh, because what we want is it's not just going to the groups. And I mean, groups maybe four or five hours a week. It's not going to the groups. It's forming those sober connections. It's being around other people that are clean and sober. It's that thing that, that go back to that first conversation we were just talking about there. It's about connection. It's about addiction becomes disconnection. You disconnect from positive resources, positive things, and you just kind of boils down into this sort of thing. So at the start, we're really pushing that positivity and that connection get yourself into this group, get yourself assimilated as quickly as you can, you know, because the sooner you feel part of the group, the safer you become. And again, it's this kind of, we always use that herd mentality with the guys and sort of say to them, it's like when you watch these nature documentaries and you see like the lions hunting the, the, the animal, whatever they are, it's never the young and the fit ones in the middle that they're looking at, they're looking for the weak ones that are struggling behind that are on their own and looking to get picked off and that's it. You know, if you want to stay safe, if you want to get well, make yourself a part of her, be part of something, connect with something, be in the middle of it. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's really kind of pushing that. I mean, all the stuff that, I mean, we, we drug test initially for the first sort of 12 weeks just to... Just to keep them on the toes is the long and the short of that. And then and some, some of them will, will keep testing for longer if we don't trust them or if they haven't established that trust or if they've had a wobble. Some come off testing a lot quicker than that because you can just sort of see that, um, you know, that that desire to drink or to use it as, as dissipated. I mean, I think this is one of the things that, that you know, you mentioned earlier on when you said I, I was talking about... And I, 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 I can see that changing people, but I don't understand the psychological process. One of the big ones for us is when you first start off, the, that first two or three days or, or first few weeks of not drinking and not using her uh, agony and the days drag and, and really, really hard work. But at some point, something just switches and there's a change in your head where it goes from being you're desperate not to use to it just being life's far easier if I don't drink and I don't drug. Do you know what I mean? And we, we kind of think when you speak to, to most people in long-term sustainable recovery, they'll say that there's a point there and we're not sure how it is. We don't know how to quantify it. When it happens, it's different. I mean, some of us are different. I know some people that are like 15 years like uh, sober now and would like still like chew the right arm off for a drink. You know, so it's not all of us. But for the vast majority of us, it's just like a switch at some point when it just... Just be, life just becomes easy being in recovery. It's not a grind anymore. It's not an hardship. It's just, well, yeah, all in all, I've got to do to keep being well and keep enjoying this life. It's just keep doing it, keep making these right choices, you know what I mean? So that that would be, would be really interesting. There's a way of teasing that out at some point. You know, did, did, that, that for, us. for some people, does it just creep up on them? Hmm. I think it does for all of us. I don't think any of us like ever wakes up in the morning and goes... Oh, my God, you know, there's no no desire there anymore. But I think it just always sort of, see, especially when you reflect back on it at some point, and quite often it's other people who kind of pick up on you. You know, sometimes, like I say, I mean, I see some of the guys when they're coming in, and it's like they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders, and you know that every day from just struggling, every day is a grind, just getting through this without picking up, without using, and it's just, that's the primary function when they get up in the morning, it's just to get through this day without using and without fucking it up. 
but then you see him like sort of three, four months later on, the pennies dropped and they're just completely different and they're, they're happy, they're laughing, they're, they're free, I think is what I'm looking for, it's free. I think if you were looking for, to coin the term, it's the moment of emancipation. I think that is it, it's that bit there because there's a certain thing when just at some point it just... It's like the shackles come off in your mind, but it's almost you don't even recognise it at the time. I think probably because you're enjoying it, probably the moment it happens, you're probably, probably brought about by love or, or fun or pleasure or enjoyment, as a, you know, which I think is, is how you recover it needs to be defined by a positive sort of thing, where there's addiction, it's always about misery, it's always about pain, it's always about suffering, you know what I mean?